Welcome! Today we're recreating the App Store using SwiftUI and it is a beginner-friendly tutorial. Now you may have noticed that I'm not in my usual office. Today we're coding at the park. It is such a beautiful day out and so that's what we're doing today. Uh, I hope you're ready to get started. Now I'm gonna use my iPad mini. So this is the smallest iPad you can get and but it is a really amazing iPad. So I'm gonna use my iPad mini and the app called Swift Playgrounds. Now Swift Playgrounds is an app made by Apple that is freely available to download. And you can actually create Swift Playgrounds but now also you can create Swift apps. Um, so that's what we're gonna use for today. Now I'm sure you know what the App Store looks like. Now this is what we see when we open up the App Store. There is essentially a tab bar in the bottom that has five options. And then you have a bunch of content in the view. So we're only gonna build the today's view. Um, but we can see that we have a heading with a date, a profile picture, and then they look like cards. And so they have images and some of them have like a bunch of just like uh, suggested apps to download and then you have like this floating I don't think we're gonna have time for this and this is not really beginner uh, focused but what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some of these cards in Swift UI and show you how easy and fast it is to create you know a pretty sophisticated app okay so let's get started if you haven't already you should download the Swift Playgrounds app I already have a download on my iPad so we're gonna open it up and you're gonna if this is your first time, you're not gonna see many documents in there, but what you will see is you can actually create, in the bottom, you'll be able to see, uh, create an app or create a playground. Now, we're gonna actually create a, a Swift UI app. So that's what we're gonna select. Um, it's gonna create a new app for me. And um, if this is your first time using Swift Playgrounds, let's briefly just take a look at the interface and to see how you know everything works. So what we have here is our code editor, right, on the left side, and we see that there is already some boilerplate code. Um, this is what we call hello world. It's a minimal amount of code to see that our, 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 our software or our, our development interface is working. Now on the right, we see an app preview. Now we can essentially hide and show it uh, by tapping on that button over there. Um, and we can also look at our um, folder structure or our files. So this is essentially our, you know, a list of all the files that we have in our, our project. And here we can see that we have uh, two Swift files. We have the content view, which is the view that we're gonna use to create our App Store view. And then we have the My App. It's essentially the entry point into the app. So this essentially loads uh, the content view that we're gonna use uh, to create all the UI elements for our App Store. So for now, don't worry too much about it. Now, uh, there's more tutorials on essentially Swift UI and app development, but for this, we're just gonna try and recreate a very well-known app. So let's get back to our content view and we're gonna reopen our app preview. Let's briefly take a look at the code to see what it's actually doing. Before we add any more code, you know, we wanna make sure that we understand what is currently um, on the display. Now, if you're new to Swift, this may be a little bit difficult for you, um, but this is really an intro to Swift UI. So if you've done Swift before, but you haven't done Swift UI, then this I think is a great tutorial. Now I will do more beginner friendly tutorials that also go into the basics of Swift. So if you don't know Swift yet, but you'd like to learn it, subscribe and I'll make more tutorials uh, like this one. What we're gonna see here is that we're importing the Swift UI framework. Now a framework is essentially a set of, of, of modules that have functionality that, that Apple provides us or third party developers. You can create your own framework. But in this case, we're using Apple Swift UI framework so we can use Swift UI. And then we create a struct which is a content view, which is a view. Now inside our content view, this is what is really important for this tutorial, is our body property. And this is a sum view. Now the body property is what contains all of our UI elements. And so what we're, get, what we're seeing here is that there's a V stack or a vertical stack. So two UI elements or more, two or more UI elements are essentially stacked vertically on top of each other. And so we see that we're using an SF symbol here, which is the globe icon. Um, by the way, Apple has a lot of these symbols just um, that we can use in our app. So make sure that you use them. And then below that, we have a text view, which says hello world. And as I mentioned before, hello world is the basics that you usually do to see, you know, if your language, the, uh, the environment is working properly. Here we can see our app preview. Now, something very cool is if I update uh, this to hello universe, we can see that our app preview is automatically updating. So this is very uh, convenient to be able to quickly prototype your UI uh, without having to reload every single time you make a change. 
So this is very, very powerful. Now, before we start with our actual code, let's take a step back to really start to think like a Swift UI engineer or creator. Um, if we look at the App Store, we can see there's many UI elements that are essentially stacked, right? Like we can see how they're essentially laid out in a specific way. So up top, we see a header, right? That scrolls away uh, with the content. And we can see that there's a subheading, right? That says the date. And then we have a main heading or just a heading that says today. And then on the right, we have our profile picture that's, I think, aligned with the bottom of the heading. So this is how you need to start thinking in terms of, of how to build your UI. It's you have to look at interfaces or as de at designs or mockups and kind of start to think in terms of how, how do I lay it out? Like what are the stacks that we use um, you know, to create this layout? So for example, in this case, what we can do is we can use a horizontal stack, right? Essentially elements that are horizontally uh, arranged and then what we do is we create um, a V stack in the horizontal stack for the Tuesday, right? The date and the today header. And then we see that there's like some space in between that might change depending on the phone screen size. And so what we'll do is we'll actually add a spacer in between and then we'll add um, another element, which is essentially this is just like an image showing your profile image. All right, we're ready to start coding. Now we're just gonna focus on the header and then we'll move on to other UI elements in this app store. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove you know, any of the content that we have here um, in our code. So let's do that. And like I mentioned in, in, you know, in the previous section, uh, what it looks like is that they're using a, a horizontal stack. So we're gonna create an H stack and what we'll do is inside this H stack, there's three elements. Really, it looks like there's two, but there's really three elements. And, and you should start to kind of think this way. There's the, the text on the left. You have the, the space that automatically adapts to the screen size. And then you have the profile picture on the right. And so let's start with the text on the left. On the left, we're going to create a V stack. Now, you should ask yourself, why a V stack? Because there's two elements vertically stacked on each other. So we're gonna do a V stack. Um, ooh, there's a lot of wind. So if the wind is a little bit noisy, I apologize. Now it was too beautiful outside to to give this up, you know, this beautiful day up. So I I apologize if the audio is not great, but I hope you can still follow along. Um, now we're gonna add a spacing of zero points. Oops. Because by default, SwiftUI actually adds some spacing, but we don't want any spacing by default. We want to put our own spacing um, in between. And so what we'll do now is we'll create, uh, what is this? This is a text object. And this text object will be the date. So we'll say, for now, we're just going to mock it. Um, theoretically, or, or the proper way of doing it is, is using an actual date formatter and automatically populating the date. But we're just trying to create the UI. Um, of the app store. We're, so we're gonna just statically uh, add the text here. Um, so it's Tuesday, July 19. And as you can see in our preview, we already see that it's coming along, right? We can see that this date is being shown. Now it's not the, the same style um, as uh, the text that we can see in the app store, but we're gonna fix that. Um, and then we have some other text, which is so another text view, and we'll add today. So now we can at least see our stack, uh, our text view stack vertically, but it doesn't quite look like, um, you know, the, the the layout that we have in the App Store. So let's fix that. So what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna style these. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say font. So in Swift UI, uh, you have these views, right? Which is a text view, an image view, an H stack, a V stack. But then you also have modifiers to change the way uh, those views behave or, or appear. And so we're gonna change the font. Um, uh, we're, we're gonna change the font, so the way the, the typography appears on screen. And what we'll do is we'll create a, um, let's see, I think it might be a subheadline. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll say that this is a subheadline font. Um, Apple has built in weights. And the benefit of using those weights or those font weights is that if 
For accessibility, it's automatically adjusted if a person has bigger fonts on their phone. You always want to be uh, designing and developing for accessibility. And then the today's date, it feels like it's a title. So we're going to create another font modifier. And let's, this is I think a title too. Uh, let's make it a title. Um, yeah, that feels right. Now, we can now see that the weights look okay, but the color and the capitalization and uh, aren't quite there yet. So let's go back to our date, our subheadline. And so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the color of the text. Now, this is also known as the foreground color um, of a text view. And we'll set this to gray. Um, now, this is essentially statically uh, setting the text. What you might wanna do is you wanna adapt for light and dark screens, but for now, we're gonna keep it simple just so you can follow along. So now we can see our text is gray. And what we'll finally do for our subheading or our date heading is we're gonna uppercase all the text in our string and that we've provided to our text view. And so there's a modifier we can use or a method, it's really, it's a, it's a string uh, method, not a modifier, um, to uppercase it. And now we can see, ooh, that looks great, right? It's uppercased. Now, if you look at the App Store, uh, it looks like the weight of the font is a little bit thicker. This feels like it's a little bit too thin. And so what we'll do is we'll add a font weight. And in this case, let's say medium. Uh, yeah, medium looks great. Um, so we can see now, as, as a child yelling, um, things that you find in the park, I guess. Um, so now we can see that our date looks great. Um, let's work on our today text. And so our today text is definitely, I think what we need is just a, a font weight. I think everything else looks good because it's already white text. So we're going to do our font weight and this feels like a bold or maybe semi bold. Yeah, I think bold looks great. And so you can see how the app preview just automatically changes our preview as we're typing our code. This is such, that's why I love Swift Playgrounds and Swift UI. It is such a delight to learn and, and to code um, using these tools. Okay, so now that our text views are complete, what we wanna do is we wanna essentially push them to the left, right? Because we, we can see that that's, that's what the, the app store is doing. And so what we're gonna do now is, um, after our VStack, we'll add what is called a spacer. And this automatically pushes, as we can see, the text to the left. Now there's something weird happening here. Um, we can see that the text is being pushed, but it's center justified. And what we wanna do is we wanna make the text left justified. So we're gonna actually um, set a property of our VStack, which is our alignment, and we'll set that to leading. Now leading, in this case, in English-based languages, is the left side and trailing is the right. Now, there are some languages that read from right to left, so that will be flipped. But in this case, we want it to essentially push it to the left. Now, one thing we're also seeing is that um, on the App Store, there's some spacing around you know, our, our horizontal stack. It's not squished to the screen. And so that's very easy to change too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a modifier to our H stack and we'll just say padding. Now you can specify a value of padding, but we'll just use the default. Um, if you wanted to specify it, you could just say, you know, it's 10, um, a very common padding is 16. So let's just specify 16. Um, that looks amazing already, right? Like this is, this is great progress. And so what we're gonna do next is we need our image. Um, uh, we need to have our image in here. And so that's the final uh, UI element that we're gonna add to our H stack. Okay, in order to add our image, what we have to do is we have to go into our file manager and actually add an image from our gallery. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, do add document and then we'll select photo. And in this case, we'll select my profile picture. Now, if you build a real production app, you would essentially have the user provide their uh, picture you know, in a database. Um, but in this case, we're just statically adding an image um, just so we can complete the tutorial. We're gonna rename this to profile picture. Um, and that's essentially our image that we have there. Now, we're gonna go back to our content view, close our file manager, we'll add an image view, and we'll add our profile picture string. Now, you can see that this is a ginormous image because it's 2000 by 2000 pixels, which is way bigger than the resolution of, of, our, of our app preview. 
So what you want to do in order to resize an image in SwiftUI, you have to add the resizable modifier. Um, and this already makes it look a little bit better, but not great. What we see is that the aspect ratio of this image is being destroyed. And so what we want to do actually is we want to say, hey, we're going to do an aspect ratio um, and we want it to fit our image. So we don't want it to fill the container. We want it to uh, retain the aspect ratio of the image. And so we'll do a fit. Now, as we look at our app store, we we know that this profile image is nowhere near as big as what we see on screen. Now, what's happening is SwiftUI is taking up as much space as possible for this image, and we we don't want that. So what we'll do is, I think the profile picture um, on the app store is I think probably 40 or 49 points. Um, that's usually the size that you'd make a profile picture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a frame modifier where we specify the width and let's do 40 and we'll do the height which we'll do also as well as 40 and I saw that was an error that I added an extra comma but we can see that our 40 by 40 um, profile picture looks great now the final thing is there's a circular mask on our profile picture so let's add that and so in order to essentially clip the shape to a circle we can use a modifier called clip shape and we'll add a circle as our clip shape. So what we're gonna work on next is this fun looking card that says try something new, five fun Snapchat lenses. And as you can see, there is, uh, it, it's pretty sophisticated UI element, right? Because we have text up top that has a, a, an image as a background there. You see these filters. And then on the bottom, you have some additional information. So you have the app icon, which is the Snapchat icon the Snapchat heading and then a subheading saying share the moment. And on the right, you have a button that says open. And so this is essentially a composite element that we're gonna piece together, but let's think like a Swift UI coder, right? What would this, like, how would we make this? Now, one way of doing this, right, is, uh, cause there's multiple ways that you can construct these elements, right? It doesn't have to be a, a, a specific way. Um, but one way you can do that is you can have a V stack, right? Where you have essentially, um, so you have a V stack where you have the card with the image and then you have the bottom, um, more information and like the action item, the open button, right? You can do that. And then in that V stack, you have two elements, right? You have the top uh, image and then you have the bottom mo uh, module. Um, for the image module, what it looks like is that you have an image and then on top of that, you have layered text. And we've so far seen a V stack, an H stack, but if you want depth, meaning you want to come on top of something, you use what's called a Z stack. And so what we'll likely do uh, in this case is we have a Z stack with an image as the first element or the bottom element. And then on top of that, we'll add a V stack in that Z stack um, with the subheading text, the heading text, and then a spacer. And then for the bottom one, so the bottom module that has the icon and the text, before I tell you, try to guess what, like how you would build this. Um, pause the video and, and, and try to think of how you would actually construct these UI elements uh, together. The way I would potentially construct it is you have a horizontal stack that has um, four elements. If you count it three, um, you should have four. And I'll, I'll explain why. Uh, one, you have the icon, the app icon. Uh, two, you have the Snapchat and the subheading text. Three, the space that automatically uh, you know, adapts the, the space in between the text and the button. And then the fourth one is the open or get or download button, whatever that might be, you know, if you haven't had, if you haven't downloaded the app before. Um, but that's essentially the way we're gonna construct it. Now, um, if you wanna rewatch that segment just and understand what we're gonna build, you feel free. But that's how uh, we can make this. So let's get started. Okay, so in our code, in our body, um, there's a few things that we can do to clean it up a bit more. Because right now, you know, if we, can, if we add so much code, it's gonna get very messy. 
So what we can actually do is we can create a new property um, inside of our, our content view. So we're going to create a new property inside of our content view called far heading, which will be some view. And what we'll do is we'll add everything in this h tag. So this h tag, um, including its padding. So we'll cut that and we'll add it to our heading. And then what we'll do is we'll just add this property in our body. Um, this can make the body much neater. And you always want to kind of clean up as you build, you know, these composite UI elements, you kind of want to clean up. And we can see here that our app uh, still behaves the same way. So we can now still see our heading. And so what we'll do next is we'll create our cart um, uh, UI element. And so as I mentioned before, it looks like there is, uh, you know, if, if you take a look at all of this, it's all just vertically stacked elements. And for now, we're gonna use a V stack to stack the heading and the cards, but you'll see that there's some other ways that you can make a vertical scroll um, in a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll create a V stack and we'll add our heading in our V stack. Okay, so we know that our cart is made up of V stack. So we're gonna create a new V stack in this case. And we wanna specify that our spacing is zero points. We don't want um, any default spacing because we're gonna modify that ourselves. And then as I mentioned before, um, it's a V stack of a Z stack and an H stack. So the upper text is in a Z stack. Um, if you're uh, not in the US, you'd call it a Z stack, uh, just, just FYI. Um, so you'd have a Z stack and you'd have a H stack. And we're gonna add some comments. Um, it, it's generally a good idea to kind of add some comments if things get a little bit messy. So um, in this case, we'll just say uh, image header um, and this is uh, action module or um, icon plus text plus button. Um, just so that we kind of have placeholders or instructions on what is intended to happen uh, in this code. Okay, we're gonna work on our background image for our card. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our file manager, add a new photo, and we're gonna select this picture I got from unsplash.com. Now you can you know get your own picture, um, but if you wanted to get this one, it's on unsplash.com, and I'll also link it in the description of this video. We'll call this background image and now that we have this we can see that it's an 800 by 964 pixels um, uh, large now we're gonna go back to our content view and we're gonna reopen up our app preview now in our Z stack what we're gonna add is our image now because this image is bigger than our screen it's gonna essentially mess things up but we'll fix it um, so no worries so we'll add background image Okay, so now that we have our image in there, again, we have to use our resizable modifier to make sure that we can resize it as needed. Now, what we're also gonna do is in this case, what we want to happen is we want our image to be constrained to a certain height as we can see in our, in our app store. And so we're gonna set the frame height to let's say 300 points. Now, it definitely looks off. It looks like it's being squished. And so what we'll do is we'll say, okay, we want our aspect ratio to fill. So we don't, uh, we want it, the image to fill within the 300 points. Now we can see there's some weird behavior here. It's almost like it's overflowing. And this is easily fixed by saying we can just clip it. So we can clip our image to the size needed to properly fill the frame. Next, we're gonna work on uh, the V stack that contains our text in the top left corner. So let's do that. So we'll do V stack. Sorry. And we'll add, and this is very similar to the heading that we worked on. So you should, this should be a bit familiar for you. And we'll say try something new, which will uppercase. The font is gonna be, it feels like this is like a body font with a font weight of medium. And a color 
this foreground color of gray. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we're also gonna add the five fun Snapchat lenses text. This font, I think the value is like a title too, just looking at the size. Now, it might be difficult for you to know what the sizing is, but this comes with experience. So just try and see if it looks good. If it looks good, then you're good. And if it doesn't, you change it. Um, and then the font weight well, is definitely uh, bold. And the color, the foreground color is black. Okay, great. So we also see that this is now centered. So the Z stack really centers your content by default. But what we can do is in our Z stack, we can change the alignment. And so we'll add an alignment of top leading. And that now pushes the text into the top left corner. So again, we have a Z stack with a background image and then a V, a v stack in there with text on top of it. And we're changing the alignments to be top leading so it goes to the top left corner now it doesn't look quite right yet but that can be fixed um, we can we see again that our text is center like justified in our v stack so we can change the alignment there and say leading and that should put our text essentially on uh justified by the leading edge and then we also see that there's there's some padding in our card um, that we don't see here and so what we'll do on our v stack we'll add some padding of let's say 16 um, and now we can see that it looks pretty similar now it's a different image but you can see how quickly we're able to just build you know this user interface um, so it, it's really powerful um, now we're not done what we need right now is we need our bottom part so let's work on that next Okay, so next we're gonna work on the bottom part that has the icon, the, the text, and the button. Now, I'm not gonna put in the Snapchat icon just because that's, I think, a, uh, it's a trademark thing that I don't wanna include in this video, but I'll just put a different uh, image in there. So let's get started. Um, first thing, it's we have an H stack, right? And what we'll do is we'll create an image. So we'll work from left to right. We'll create an image and let's go to our file explorer and import another image so we're going to do photo and actually we'll use uh, this image of this young lady uh, so we'll say uh, snap icon we'll close our file manager we'll go back to content view and we'll reopen up our app preview and now we're going to add snap icon okay we can see that our image again is too big but we can add our resizable modifier right that makes it resizable and i think this is like a let's see the image looks like it the icon looks like it's like a 50 by 50 maybe so we'll add 50 50 uh, that looks the right size um, but it looks like it's squished and so what we'll do is we'll add an aspect ratio of fill. So we want within the bounds of that frame, we want it to fill uh, the image, but then we, all, we want it clipped to the 50 by 50. So we only wanna use um, that squared part of it. And now our image looks appropriate. So again, we, res we allow it to be resizable. We set the frame, we set the content uh, to fill mode, and then we clip it so it, um, fills within the bounds of that frame. So that looks great. Now we also see that there's a corner, the corners are rounded and that's what's called a corner radius. Um, so we'll set a corner radius. That looks like it's like a corner radius of like eight. Um, eh, a little bit more, maybe 10. Yeah, so there we have our corner radius. What we'll work on next is the text and we can see there's two text views stacked on each other so that's again a v stack so we'll do a v stack um, and in this case uh, we have a text view that says snapchat and another text view that says share the moment so those are the two text views that we have now snapchat looks like 
it's I'm gonna do something that is not recommended but it, it'll just show you that you can also do this so I'm gonna set the font to a system font and specify um, the values instead of just having a predefined uh, value that Apple provides so I'm gonna say the size is like 17 uh, the font weight is medium and the design is default uh, yeah that's probably a bit smaller actually let's do 15 uh, 16 okay that looks good and then we'll do a similar thing for our actually for this one we'll just do a caption too um, that should be uh, it's probably a caption yep there we go so you can see how you can mix and change your fonts but in general you don't want to statically set the font size just because for accessibility if the user wants to increase it it's not going to increase uh, automatically with the OS um, settings so be careful doing that and then on this one we're going to add a foreground color of gray and there we have it now again VStack tends to center align so we're going to override the alignment and set it to leading and we should have that boom done it's it's coming along very very well okay let's move on because we're we're getting close to having our card uh, we're going to add a space like I mentioned our third object is a space because we want kind of to squish it you see how it like moves it automatically it, it starts to essentially push elements out and then next to our space there we're going to have our button so this is essentially uh, how you create a button so we would we're just going to select the one that has because uh, there's multiple ways you can instantiate a button and we're going to just select one with an action and a label um, and I'm going to press enter and you can see that this is what our button looks like so I, I'm Swift Playgrounds is helping me write my code which is so powerful so in this section we have our action so what we want to happen now in this case we're just going to add a print statement a print statement essentially sends a message to the console it's really for debugging or for it's really for the developer the user will never see a print statement um, but we're essentially going to say button pressed now ideally you'd essentially have you know in the app store it would open up the app or it would download the app so there's an action to the button otherwise we wouldn't use a button um, and then in the label essentially the appearance of our button we're going to style it so in this case what we see is that there is a text view um, that has the text open and we're going to uppercase it uh, we can see that the color is um, not not the color that we want so we're going to add a thin color of blue um, yep that it looks like that's um, the reason why we use not not use a foreground color but a thin color is a button um, if you tint it a certain way then it behaves with that color it has several states that are then adjusted for that color so that's why I used a thin color we also want to change the font weight to medium yeah that starts to look good okay so now that we, we see that our text looks like it you know the same to our app store now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a background for our button so we're gonna add a background and which will be a color and for now, we're just gonna make it uh, white. Because the reason why we're gonna make it white is we're gonna change the color once we have the card completed. But for now, we're gonna make it white just so that we can see where the edges of the button are. And like we've seen here, it doesn't, the button is bigger than that. And so what we'll do is we'll add some padding and you'll see it grow. We don't want the padding on top and on the sides to be equal. So what we'll do in this case is we'll say top this will be five and oh actually no what we want is we want the vertical to be five and we want the horizontal to be eight that kind of looks like the one in the app so maybe nine um, that seems to look right Okay, and the final thing that we have to do is we have to make this button pill-shaped or capsule-shaped because it's not a square button. And so what we'll do is we'll set a clip shape to capsule. And that should make our button a pill-shaped button. Now, there's one more thing. 
we see that there's a lot of or there's some padding around our icon and button or whatever it feels like there's, there's, there's not enough padding right now so let's update that so in our h stack what we're gonna do is we're gonna essentially just say padding and we're gonna make it 16 um, and now we can see there's like more space around our card our card has um, one it has padding on the sides right it does not um, go to the edges and it has a background color but before we add those what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy everything in our V stack into a card a card property um, so what we'll create is we'll create a new property called var oops I think I may have messed up uh, Parenthesis, uh, braces. Okay, there we go. So we'll create a new property called featured card, which is some view, and we'll add it in there. And then the featured card will be added below um, our heading. And you can see that this, um, again, we have our, our, our layout the way we had it before, but now we just have a much cleaner code. And then to wrap up, what we're going to do is we're going to add padding on our card um, and we're going to add a background for our card. Okay, so we're going to add a background color to our card and you'll see that, um, I, I mean, I can just make it red. So just so you can see, that's what the background looks like. So we're going to set the, the background color to, for now, we'll just do black. Um, I know that the app store doesn't have that, but we don't have a default dark gray. And so for now, we'll just make it black. Um, so it can stand out from the background. Of course, you know, you can change to the color anything you want, um, but this just shows you an example. Now, one last thing too is once we have the background color, we also want a corner radius of, and this corner radius is probably something bigger. So I would say maybe like 30, uh, no, that's too big, 20, uh, probably 17. Yeah, that looks great. So now we have our card um, completed, right? We see our image, we have our text, we have our button. Um, you can see that I can actually, you can see that the print statement is button pressed. So that's, we know that the button is working. And then the final thing we'll do for this card is we actually also wanna add padding. So our heading, for example, add padding of 16. So what we'll do is over here, We'll add horizontal padding of 16. And there we go. Okay, so I'm back from lunch and we're gonna continue and finish our Swift UI App Store. The views are still centered in the app preview. And so what we wanna have really happen is we want it to uh, anchor to the top and we also want it to scroll. So if I try to scroll, it doesn't really scroll. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So we're going to create a scroll view and we're going to have Swift Playgrounds uh, help us out. So we're going to use that constructor and um, so a scroll view takes in a few parameters. The first one is the axis and we're going to do the Y axis or the vertical axis because we want a vertical scroll. So we're going to do a vertical scroll view. We don't want to show indicators. So the indicators are when you scroll, you see kind of like the, the, the scroll bar either vertically and or horizontally. We don't want to show those. Um, and then the content. Um, and what we'll do is we'll add the V stack to this scroll view. So we'll cut it and we'll paste it. Um, and now we, we see that the content is actually to the top and we can scroll so we now have our scroll view, which is essentially the same behavior as in our app store. But just one line of code, we were able to make a scroll view um, for our vertical stack. So it's very convenient and simple to do. Okay, so now that we're moving on to the next UI element, in this case, our favorites card with four apps, we're gonna again take a moment to, to dissect and reverse engineer what we want to happen in our layout. So we have a header with, again, subheading and heading text that stays the same, but there's no background image. So we don't really need a Z stack in this scenario. Now, then we have four of these rows. Essentially, this is a table, right? It's a table view um, where you have four rows. 
and each row has an app icon, an app name, a tagline, and then a button. And if the app already has been downloaded once, it has a cloud download icon, and if it has not, then it has a get button. We also see a subheading text below the button that has in-app purchases. So let's look at the Crossy Road um, uh, row first. So this looks like what? An H stack uh, with an image icon, then a V stack with two text views, a spacer, and then a button. So again, four items. Now, if we look at the Retro Bowl one or Super Mario run, um, those have slightly different layout, right? It's again, an image uh, view, then a V stack with two text views, a spacer, and then another V stack with a button and a text view. Now, you can essentially uh, copy the code for all four, but that's not a smart way of doing this, right? What you want um, is you want to create the view code once and then populate it with data each time, so four times in this case. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to create a view that is like a card row or something like that, um, that has, has all these views that can then be populated with parameters. And so that's what we're gonna work on next. Okay, so we're gonna scroll all the way down. And in this case, we're actually gonna create a new struct. So we're not gonna create a property in our um, content view. We're gonna actually create a new view. And so that's done by creating a struct and we'll call this card row view. And this is a view. Um, and because we're adopting the view protocol, so view is a protocol that we're adopting that gives us um, functionality, we have to include a body uh, property to conform. Um, and for now, I'm just going to add uh, some text saying card row, right? We're going to add something basic. Now, you may notice that none of the preview is updating. And that's because this struct is not placed in the view hierarchy. It's never placed in the app. To add the card row view to a card, we're going to have to create a new card. So in this case, we will create um, what is called a... Uh, what, what can we call this? This is probably something like uh, a var app list card, right? It's a list of essentially four apps, uh, which is some view. And then in here, we're gonna say, okay, uh, we're gonna create a V stack. We're, we're not gonna worry too much about the title yet because we can always add that in. Um, but we're gonna do a V stack and we're gonna add uh, two cart row views. So we're gonna create two instances of cart row views. And then we have to add this app list card to our uh, scroll view in our body. Um, we're gonna add similar padding. So we're gonna add padding, which is horizontal of 16. And we're going to add padding uh, to the bottom as well, of uh, 16 as well. Okay, now our card doesn't look quite the same as, as the other one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our app list cards. We're going to try to make the card look more like the one in the app store. So what I'll actually do, I'll create another V stack. And this will contain uh, the heading and this will contain the app list. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this, I'm going to copy this or cut this V stack from there and add it in this V stack. So we're going to do a nested V stack, which is possible. And then we're going to do for the heading, what we'll actually do is we'll do a horizontal stack so that we can have on, on the left, we have the text and on the right, we have a spacer. Because again, we want this to expand as appropriate. So I'll create an H stack and inside of this H stack, so this is a lot of nesting, but that's, you know, this is how you see that, you, you know, there's many ways you can actually do this, um, but I'm just using something that comes to mind, you know, right away. Um, we can do a V stack and we're gonna say, okay, this text is um, our favorites. And well, again, of course, uppercase that. And then we have another text, which says retro fun. Now, it doesn't look like the card is actually, you know, it doesn't look like it's a proper design, but that for sure will happen. Um, so after this V stack, so next to this V stack, what we want is we want a spacer. Because as you can see, this will push the text 
um, to the side. Now, as we can see again, the text inside of our V stack is uh, center justified. So we'll add some alignment in here and we'll set that to leading so that the text can be essentially pushed to the, the leading edge of the card. Now, again, this doesn't look like it's properly styled. So let's quickly style the each of the text views. So this is gonna be, um, it, I think it's a, the exact same as uh, our featured card. So we're just gonna copy paste it. Let's see, where is that? Um, okay, so it's body. Let's just, we're gonna we're just gonna copy paste and then we'll scroll over here and paste it. And now we can see that our text looks the same. And then we're gonna also do the same for the retro fun text right there. So by the retro fun, we're gonna add the same modifiers that we had in our featured card. And now we can see we have our retro fun um, text in black. Now in the app store, this is white. So we're gonna change that to white and that's kind of like what it looks like. So our text seems to be uh, taking shape. Now, what I'm gonna do next is it's a little bit hard to kind of see where the card, um, you know, the boundaries of the card. And so what we'll actually do is uh, on the outer, uh, on the outer V stack of the Atlas card, we'll add a background color and we'll make it black. Um, that way we can see where our card is. Now we can clearly see that the, the the spacing on the edges is not appropriate. So let's add some padding. So we're gonna quickly add some padding there. And this is already starting to look much better. Now we're also gonna add a corner radius of 17, the same uh, corner radius as um, our featured card. There we go. Okay, now the remainder of the card work is really in the card row view. So let's scroll to the card row view and we're gonna give this um, this view some parameters that will change the way um, it looks and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, if, if you think about it this view needs four properties and let's think about what those properties are one it needs the name of an image or an icon it needs the name of the app it needs its tagline and it needs to know if it has been downloaded before and so that's what we're gonna work on next. So we're gonna create a constant property called uh, icon name, which is a string. Um, and then we're gonna, we're gonna add a, another constant property called app name, which is also a string. We'll create a third property called tagline, which is also a string. And we'll create a boolean property called has been downloaded before and by default we'll make this false so we'll give it a, a default property of false so that if we don't provide this in the constructor it'll just show um, the view as not having been downloaded before okay now what we're seeing now is we're seeing an error in our uh, app list v stack because now we're using a constructor that no longer exists we now have to pass in parameters into our constructor to instantiate a card row view um, and we can't just pass in an empty uh, uh, parameters so we're gonna now essentially create all these different rows and so we can have crossy road retro ball super mario run and tetris um, crossy road has been downloaded before so we're gonna essentially say uh, crossy road icon now it's not going to show uh, the image yet just because we haven't provided the view with what it should look like but we're passing at least at least the parameters into it the app name is called crossy road and the tagline is endless arcade hopper and in this case we have downloaded before and so we're going to say true um, you can see that initially the the Swift Playgrounds recommended only three parameters because we have a default property on has down, has been downloaded before. Now let's fix the second one. Icon name for Retro Ball is going to be Retro Ball. Oh, this needs to be a string. Retro Ball icon, and then the name is going to be Retro Ball, 
and the tagline is play play football like it's 1987 that's a fun tagline and this one hasn't been downloaded before so we can just leave that the default constructor the third card row view is going to be uh, Super Mario Run, which is going to be a Super Mario Run icon. The app name is Super Mario Run. And the tagline is Control Mario with just a tap. Um, and again, we haven't downloaded this before, so uh, has been downloaded before is default false, and so we're going to leave it that way. And then finally, we're going to create one final uh, card row view and this is going to be Tetris icon Tetris oops this needs to be a string and the tagline is the official block puzzle game And in this case, has been downloaded before, it should be set to true because we have downloaded this app before. So now you can see there's actually four cart rows. Now remember that in our cart row, we just have a static tax view that says cart row. So that's why it doesn't change with the parameters, but we now see four, so at least that's working. Okay, next we're gonna work on our cart row to add in the image, the, you know, the title, the tagline, and the button. So in our card row view we have an h stack with four elements so we're going to create an h stack in this case and the first thing in the h stack is an image and in this case we're just going to pass in the icon name now since this image doesn't exist it's not going to render anything so we'll have to add those images into our project next we're going to add a v stack with a text view that has the title. So in this case, we're gonna say this is the app name and the tagline, oops. And if you scroll there, we can now see that we have uh, essentially that information is now being populated in each of these cards. And then we'll add a uh, a spacer which it might not take up all the space so we have a spacer there um, now again in our v stack make sure to set the alignment to leading so that our text is is properly justified there um, as you can see there we go now the text looks uh, way too big but we'll fix that um, so in here what we're going to do is we're going to say this is uh, the font so for the font we'll make this a sub headline let's see what that looks like yeah sub headline looks like the right font and then we'll make the font weight that looks like it's a semi bold and the the text color is white so i think we're done with the app name and then for the the tagline we'll make the font uh, let's say caption yeah that looks good and then we'll make the foreground color gray there we go that looks better all right it's starting to look great and then finally we should also add in our button okay so I had to relocate because it got very loud with the lawn mowers and children playing now I'm at a park so that's kind of an obvious thing to happen but uh, we're back and we're gonna finish our app we're in the home stretch so let's get uh, going so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna work on our button for our card row view. So we'll say button and then we'll use uh, that constructor. Um, in the action, we'll essentially print get and then the app name. So we'll use string interpolation to uh, print get whatever app name it is. And then for the label, now this is interesting, right? Because if it has been downloaded before, then we don't wanna show get, we just wanna show an icon with a cloud download. So we're gonna use an if statement and we'll say has been downloaded before. So if has been downloaded before, what we wanna show is the cloud download icon. So we're gonna use image uh, system name and I actually don't know 
what this icon is. So what we're going to do is we're going to help, uh, we're going to use Swift Playgrounds to help us uh, to find this icon. So when you tap on the plus icon and you go to the third uh, segment in the segmented picker, uh, here you should be able to find all the SF symbols that are available to you. Now there's a lot of them. I think there's like a thousand something. So we're going to just search and let's see cloud. So if I search cloud, then that's already much better. And now we just have to find uh, the one we're looking for. Uh, there it is. Perfect. That's the icon. And as you can see, oh, it actually inserted the image for me. I thought it was just going to be the text. So we're going to remove the previous image. Um, okay, we're going to remove that. And we can now already see that it's showing up. Now it's showing up in orange, but it's showing up in, in our Swift Playground, which is amazing. Um, so next, we'll change the, uh, the tint of it to blue. Uh, because on the app store it is also blue now what i'll do next is i'll just add some padding so horizontal i'll add padding of like uh let's say 15. just so the but the reason why i'm adding padding is so the button does not limit itself to just the icon but it's a little bit bigger so the tap target of the button will be slightly bigger um, so it's easier to tap and then we'll also add some uh, vertical padding and this will be like five um, okay so it's much easier to tap now and we can see that when we tap on the respective buttons we see get Tetris and get crossy row so that's essentially done um, now let's work on the the label if it is if it hasn't been downloaded before okay so we're gonna work now on the label if the the app hasn't been downloaded before we'll create a button that has a get and then has a fill shape. Now we've done this before, so I'm just gonna go to the air, to the essentially the featured uh, card and I'm just gonna copy it because we don't have to repeat ourselves. Um, so it's essentially a text view, copy. Um, let's see, where is it? So we'll create a text view and we'll just paste it and you should now see open. Now. The difference here is that uh, it doesn't have a background. So let's add a background to here and we'll have it just be white. Again, this is not quite as accurate as the App Store, but um, it shows you, you can change the background color to anything really. Uh, you can create a custom color if you wanted to. And then finally, we'll do a clip shape and we'll use our capsule to make it a rounded button. Now, something annoying is happening here. I don't know if you've noticed it, where it keeps like scrolling up. I don't know why it's happening, but um, yeah, it's, it's happening. And then here, instead of open, we'll replace this by get. Um, now, the card is getting much, much better now. We're, we're close to being done. Now, what I will say is uh, the button looks a little bit chunky. So I'm gonna reduce, so it, it, it should be wider um, so the padding on the horizontal side should be wider. So we're going to make that 16. And vertical padding, I'll reduce just a little bit. Um, this looks much better and closer to what the app store is doing. Okay, so that button, let's see get. So now we can say get Retro Bowl and get Super Mario Run. So we're, we're making great progress. Now, if you've noticed, there's also this small label under the get button that says in-app purchases. So what we'll do is we'll include this button in a VStack because this is clearly a button and then a text view. So we'll create a VStack. Um, we'll give it a default spacing of zero. We don't wanna have any default spacing built in. Um, and it should look the same, right? Because if it, one element in a VStack is just the element itself, um, it doesn't change the layout for that. But if so under this button, if it has been downloaded before, or if it hasn't been downloaded before, it should show the text in app purchases. So we're gonna create a text view and we'll say in app, oh, in app purchases. Uh, and if we scroll, now that's ginormous text, but we can see that it is actually showing the text only when you have the get button, not when you have the download button. So that's great. Let's change the font 
to caption to let's see if that's small enough um, that doesn't look small enough so what we'll do is we'll actually manually set our font so we'll set our font here to 13 let's see if what 13 looks like um, and then the weight so the weight for this one looks like it's just regular and the default font um, let's see what that looks like uh, 13 is still too big maybe that's what caption is let's see 11 let's see 9 uh, 9 feels right okay so let's say it's 9 and then the color so the foreground color will be gray like we've seen in most of our caption and subheadings uh, that looked great now there is we do want some spacing but we're gonna set that ourselves and I think five points is sufficient okay so aside from the the, the image icons or the app icons I think we're in good shape um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna import four images each icon essentially we're gonna import so we're gonna go to our file manager and we're gonna add file and say photo and let's import the icon for crossy road so we'll say crossy road icon I think that's our naming convention so crossy road icon and then we'll import another picture and this will be the retro bowl retro bowl icon and then we'll import another one and this will be uh, Super Mario and it'll be Super Mario run icon and then finally we will import Tetris so this will be Tetris icon and we have imported all our images so we're gonna close our file manager and we're gonna again reopen the app preview um, let's see why is this showing something really weird uh, content view oh that's so it's showing uh, it's messing things up because the image is too big so what we should do here is we should resize our image so the image for the the icon was too big so let's see for snapchat what was the size I think it was a 50 point size yes we did a 50 point size so we're gonna use the same thing so we're gonna set our frame width and height to 50 points um, that should be much much better already look at that that's beautiful um, and then we are going to set a corner radius the corner radius looks like a 9 maybe let's see what is that yeah that looks nice um, yeah and these images are square so it already looks good but if they weren't square what we'd have to do is we'd set the aspect ratio to fill and then add a clip shape the clip sh uh, or a clipped uh, modifier this would essentially clip the image to its square uh, frame with width and height so that looks amazing now as you may know or as you may see uh, it needs more space so each card needs s some type of space right and so what we'll do is on our H stack we'll add a padding property and I think let's see so I think it's only the vertical part that needs padding because we already have the padding on the sides so we're gonna add vertical padding and let's say 10 let's start with something uh, oh that seems like it's doing what it's supposed to do okay that looks good and then finally what we need is in between each card we want a divider now usually you'd use some type of iterator to iterate over each a data model so you'd have like a app data model so the properties the app name you know the image icon all that would be in a model it would be a model class and that would be essentially the data model and then you just iterate over it but we're just doing this statically just so you can see how the layout is made using Swift UI and there's this Swift UI view called a divider and so let's add a divider and see what that looks like um, and there we go there's a divider there and I'm gonna add a divider here so we're gonna just add dividers in between uh, each each cart row there the padding looks like a little bit much so I'm gonna reduce the padding just a, a teeny bit let's make that eight uh, yeah that looks much better and this is essentially our app store um, 
you know, recreating our app store. A as you've seen, we have a header with our subheading and heading text, our profile image. We have a featured card that shows a really beautiful image um, with a call to action. In this case, it's for Snapchat. This is not sponsored, of course, but it's for Snapchat. Um, and then you have a card that has like a card list where you have apps um, listed. And in this case, we have uh, two apps that were already previously downloaded and two apps that, ha that have never been downloaded. So there's like a different state for the view depending on if it had been downloaded before. And that's it. Now, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was really fun to recreate an existing app that we use and love so much. Um, I think I'm going to do more of these tutorials to kind of recreate and reverse engineer, you know, well-known apps. If there's any one of them that you'd like to see, you know, whether it be YouTube or Twitter or Instagram, let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so because there's more tutorials coming your way. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.